to be or not to be? That is the question. Sorry, get ready for more bad puns here. But that is indeed the question for Seattle. In May, the Seattle City Council voted unanimously to take steps to earn certification as an official B city. The effort was led by council member Nick Licata. It falls within Seattle's uh, mission to create a balance between people and nature and making sure that we can sustain the, the world we live in. A brand new proclamation shows Seattle is now the nation's eighth and largest B city recognized by the B City USA organization. Local leaders agreed to a set of commitments that will help create sustainable habitats for pollinators. So what are these commitments? Well, one of them is to ban the use of neonicotinoids on all city-owned and operated land. There's the word, neonicotinoids. What that is is a class of pesticide that harms our critical pollinators, such as bees. Ow! They're the linchpin of our agriculture system. Yep, they're essential to a critical human activity, eating. One of bees' main functions is to pollinate things, and those things provide humans with, and other animals with things to eat. To counter the country's recent massive bee die-off, several community organizations are colonizing with city leaders to create urban pollinator habitat. And where might that be? What kind of bumblebee is that? That looks like Bombus sitkensis. It's here in the open swaths of land along Seattle City Light's transmission lines. This project is important because this land is rare. And rather than have it be mown grass, City Light and the, the whole team of people who are working on this are finding ways to make it do something more than just be kind of scrubland. The long-term plan here is to restore the habitats and we're hoping that we're gonna see increased populations of pollinators we won't be able to demonstrate that, though, unless we measure them first. So that's what we're doing right now. Anybody in here? This survey team is cataloging all sorts of bees. So we're finding bumblebees, leafcutter bees, sweat bees, uh, all sorts of ground nesting bees, miniature carpenter bees, in addition to honeybees. So a pretty good spectrum of, of bee diversity here, actually. Another bumblebee here. The buzzword in this project is corridors. Long strips of connected land encourage bees to propagate. Corridors in restoration are always better than just simple islands because they allow organisms, in this case bees, to move between different areas. And effectively, you have a much larger habitat with a corridor than two separate islands. Bringing in native plants will be another step to restoring these areas to a bee, butterfly, and bird-friendly environment. Meantime, not to drone on, but you can be a honey and do your part at home to support pollinators. Here are a few ideas. Number one, eat organic food. Fewer pesticides mean healthier bees and humans. Uh, there's still a lot of folks who are still using pesticides, and that really does have a dramatic negative impact on our uh, bee population. Number two, plant native pollinator friendly plants in your garden. Number three, create a watering hole for bees and butterflies. Basically a dish filled with some rocks and water. Could it be any simpler? Number four, for you busy buzz bomb types, build a house for native bees. Here's a few different types. The perfect summer do-it-yourself project. So be nice. When you do something for pollinators, you're essentially doing for your own fellow humans and a lot of other critters. These are a, a very good indicator of habitat health in general. So a habitat that's healthy for bees is likely to be quite healthy for many, many other species. So it's, it's not just about bees, it's about a lot more. Now buzz off. Watch CityStream Thursday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel. Or get video on demand and podcasts anytime at seattlechannel.org.